Okay, we are talking now with a, a crew from Sweden. Um, could you guys tell us what you'd like your group to be called on the video and uh, a little about yourselves? Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> One is X. Oh, one is six. One is X. Uh, we call the um, um, apartment six. Apartment six. Okay, cool. Like this. <laughs> like that. Awesome. Cool. All right. Wait. What? Oh, we should have done that for floor six. Oh, okay. No. It, okay. Whatever. Yeah. That's cool. That's fine. So, uh, so what is uh, what is life like over there in Sweden, and how do you think it's different from everywhere else in the world? That's uh, a very broad question. Well, I guess what I think about, like, since you're in America, like, uh, everything is, <laughs> everything is, uh, I guess, like, pretty free here. I go to university and I get paid for it, like, uh, I guess, $300 a month in, in US dollars. And I mean, I can just, like, stay at home and just put that in the bank, you know. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty nice. Dude, everyone from the United States watching this is like, fuck these guys. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Um, well, what, what, are some of your, what are some of your interests? What do you guys like kind of want to be uh, after you get out of school? Um, we haven't figured uh, that out yet, at least for me. I want to I wanna work with like music. Music, cool. It's a kind of creative field, cool. Yeah. I'm doing like an, uh, an internship in a uh, research group, so I think I'd like to do something like that when I'm done. Maybe like in a couple of years when I'm done studying. Are there a lot yeah. of... Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, do you, what are you interested in? Uh, I mean, I want to write, I think. Uh, that's what I've felt for a while, but I don't really have the... Uh, like uh, the motivation to do it feels like just when I start, I give up. You know, Dude, it's tough to like to be a writer. You have to like write every day, and it's tough. It's tough to to sit down and, and do that every day. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, are there are there a lot of job opportunities in Sweden, or do you guys kind of are you guys more interested in traveling abroad to do your work? You think? And there are there are a lot. Of, it, it's pretty easy. For us, I yeah, say, to get a job, but I think there's like some differences at least between, or there there's a lot of differences I would say between like different people. So it's a lot about connections I feel. Or yeah, yeah. if you know people, it, 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 it's of course easier to get into a place. Or yeah, I would say we're all somewhere. pretty like privileged as far as like knowing the right people. Yeah, because I, mean, I my yeah. job I work at IKEA. Uh, so I'm like very Swedish, um, <laughs> and I, I didn't really. I like I. Pretty much, my mom just knew someone, so like, I didn't really have to do anything. Yeah, it's like I, I'm not. I'm not intending to like stay at IKEA for my entire life. Like I want to build something on my own, but like I could do that. I could just stay and work there for as long as I wanted to, and I wouldn't really have to like go out and do anything by myself like it, you know I just have those like opportunities yeah I mean you would like to say like on paper or like in theory we're like the most equal country and there's like there's supposed to be equal opportunity for everybody but if you're like, like actually honest with the situation I mean just in the city we live in there's a lot of differences oh yeah yeah just yeah. between like uh, and I think a lot of it comes down to like you say that you have this uh, uh, this equality in like polit political equality, but you still have the socioeconomic factor that drives the opportunities you have so hard, mm -hmm. like who you know and what you're stapled as. And yeah, that's interesting. We read about that in class, actually. We have, uh, you know, for all the talk about like Sweden being socialist and very left-wing country, uh, we're the only, yeah, exactly, yeah. socialist. We're, we're the only country in the world where like multinational corporations can buy up our welfare system. Yeah. That's like it's nowhere else in the world is that is, is that a thing. But in Sweden, like we, it's called Vinster uh, and it's like <laughs> okay. It's I have no idea. Yeah, could you type that out? Because maybe, I'll, yeah. Yeah, sure. Everything we type in Swedish is uh, translated. Yeah, it's like you, you can translate that. Yeah, exactly. We can translate it on our own. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, like, corporate high-risk corporations are like. 
buying up uh, like schools and yeah exactly everything. and then they just close them and shut them down down when like the profits go down because that's allowed here <laughs> for some fucking reason yeah why is that like uh, has that always been the case or is that kind of a new development well, i think there's like some like nuance to it though because like for instance like uh, i guess like a pharmacy that could be a publicly owned thing in uh, in america and that would be like normal but for a very long time we've had like you know I know you, you probably heard of like sustainable logins that we have a uh, national institute who sells all the alcohol so you can't like buy alcohol at a regular store and uh, the same thing has been happening with the uh, pharmacies we've had one pharmacy apotheket and now or like a couple of years ago quite a long time ago they opened like uh, a different it branched out so you could like open your own uh, pharmacy uh, so it's yeah it's true what i've been saying but there's still like uh, some nuance to it compared to america because i think some things that are like radical here or, like uh unique is still like uh, normal in some places because there never was any like governmental power behind it or i'm not really really, really, really sure how to say it but i guess yeah no. I guess, well, yeah, yeah I, I, just to, to question you guys further on this like i'm sure all of you have kind of a different answer um but like uh, f f to kind of improve what you think would be an ideal level of equality of opportunity in Sweden, what kind of legislation do you think needs to be passed to, to kind of progress forward in that, in that arena? Yeah, I'm, I'm really not knowledgeable enough to talk about the legislation in that manner. No. I, I do not know. I can't really say. I think, I think like uh, there's a lot of... Uh, like in general, uh, our, our politics have been since like the 90s been very dominated by some very uh, like liberal in, in like both, you could say both American and like European terms. They've been very liberal in uh, social politics, but very liberal in economics as well. And they have um, kind of like sold out everything to a point where it's, I would say that it's, it's almost like corruption in a way. Uh, especially our, our uh, that's something else we, we went through in my, my course and my, my uh, professors are very mad about it because they work that field. And it's like, you know, in, in the bureaucracy, uh, the, 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 the people who like are supposed to, to like fix everything like this, they always go to corporations. Now, always, like nothing is done on a government level, almost like everything is going through like a private channel and that creates like so many loopholes and problems. So it's like getting to the point where like, yeah, it just sucks. Yeah. It sounds like kind of what, what you're more interested in is, is, um, getting the power out of the hands of the corporations, the private sector and, and kind of allowing the, the government to, to handle those instances more often. Correct. Am I, is that, I get balance, I think. I think it's necessary to have, you know, like in, in a lot of circumstances, I actually agree with, you know, more like liberal, libertarian people. I think like there's a good point to a lot of that. We have very high taxes, which are like in some cases quite unreasonable. Uh, but in, in general, I think, especially when it just comes to like an effective system, uh, I don't think the private sector can really handle that in a lot of cases. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, do do any of you uh, other guys have like thoughts thoughts of this at all or or not not even this topic but like things that you think um, need to be improved in Sweden? Yeah, I like um, I'm pretty. I do a lot of like preaching about this stuff, and I'm pretty mad. But uh, I don't. I can't really articulate myself well enough uh, to really say anything. Understandable. Uh, yeah, especially in English. Like, yeah, like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. 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 It's like, but I think Felix, Felix, you were talking about the drug uh, politics. Here in yeah, Sweden, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we we have a we have a thing here in Sweden called uh, Null uh, It means roughly translates to zero uh, vision, I think. Yeah. And and they are really strict with drug uh, drug. Uh, they have a really strict. Drug politic here in Sweden, and by that you mean like marijuana, for yeah, example. But for it's other stuff too. Drug. It's like we really don't have a good like even people that do like 
harder substances like uh, heroin, for example, um, are treated as if they are criminals rather than someone like this is like the most people always talk about this when it comes to like, uh, you know, drug policies and stuff that we, you really need to like help addicts and we do not help addicts here at all. Like there, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do your, uh, to really get any help. If you're arrested, you get like a pick and like a strike and then like you can basically not get a job or like, well, you can, but it's like, mm. it only makes, so if a person is like very destructive towards themselves and they, they're using like a substance that they rely on and uh, they're caught with it, uh, they're going to be punished. And then once they've been punished, they're not going to like, it's going to be even harder for them than before. Like if in another country you might get help and then, you know, they can be like, okay, so you have this problem. We can like give you this, that, and the other, like to make sure that you don't do this again. And like, maybe you can get a job or, you know, yeah. you know, get your life back on track. But here it's like, you're labeled as a criminal mm. and uh, we really, we're not even the politicians. They've had this like attitude for so long that it's almost like they, they're so afraid to like admit that they were wrong at one point. So they'd have to like, really eat their own shoe or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, that may have to be like an issue that our generation has to deal with, right? Like as yeah, soon as those yeah, people yeah. kind of get voted out, you know, like yeah. something. Yeah. Even the in, in the Swedish, uh, Svenska, yeah. so mm -hmm. what, what would you call that? Uh, like the Swedish healthcare ministry or like institutional healthcare. Yeah, they wanted to uh, like this year or last year, yeah, they, they wanted to start like, uh, you know, bringing it up that, okay, our policies about specifically marijuana, it's like, it's not, um, we can't keep doing it. Reliable. Yeah. yeah. I really think you could see some resemblance of that in the like uh, psychiatric care in Sweden as well. But like, the, you, my point was like the politicians, uh, they, they weren't even like, this was the, yeah, but like, I think, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, but I think that like the same problem or like a similar problem is happening in, in, in uh, the psychiatric care as well yeah. as people would like, yeah. because like, yeah, we have free healthcare and that is amazing. But like a consequence of that is, uh, it's very streamlined and it usually, it has to go quick. But there are still options. So, like, if, if you can't afford it, you you can easily get a, a psychologist quickly, and you can have a lot of uh, interviews or talks with them. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you're kind of like forced to like meeting a regular doctor first or something similar, and explaining your situation to them. And I know a lot of people have had like terrible experiences. Yeah, everyone like me, I have, I have like a horror story from uh, the Swedish state psychiatric. Thing. And my my or maybe I can't say that, but like no I, no yeah I, please I, share the story yeah this is amazing it's not, it's, it's a part it's not specifically mine but I've heard from like I can't say who but uh, it's it's been said that from you know higher up in in the like healthcare uh, you know you know the hierarchy institutions who, who, right exactly yeah. yeah exactly they've been ordering the uh, psychiatric health wards for children to uh, not treat their diseases like their mental disorders because they don't have enough resources and enough money so they can't like do it so they're told to just sell them drugs and uh, that's like what everyone gets you just yeah. you go to to like boop is the usual thing for kids you go there and they have a talk with you and then you're like yeah have some lyrica or like yeah, some, yeah. some so, benzodiazepines yeah. It's like there's like a fucking epidemic going yeah, on. Really. Like, and yeah. nobody <laughs> wants to talk like, about it at all. Like, and that was my point. That how like people are saying now, like, okay, we need to start like really addressing this stuff. But the politicians, uh, they don't want to talk about it. Then they're like, no, we can't have like, yeah, they just there's no like, uh, and that is why we're like kind of panicking because like the people that we rely on to do something about this, they're like, they don't even want to have a discussion about it. So it's not even that you need to make a decision immediately, but you need to talk about it just to like, okay. Cause I'm not like, I'm not a super like liberal person. I don't give a fuck if like, if the law says I can't like, uh, you know, do drugs. It's not really about that. It's more like, um, I have friends and I like, and we all know people who like really struggle with these things. And it's like, I don't want to see my friends, like die because some asshole can't just admit that they're just 
It's like in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. If you admit that you were wrong, and it's like I'm not gonna even be mad at you in the long run because you're at least like admitting it and you're moving forward and like you're willing to like just take the blame for it so we can you know have a better day tomorrow like that kind of thing. But, I just have, you know, I just I just have to say, guys, I like so appreciate like how like literally it just like immediately guys like sat down and are talking so articulately about this stuff and and like people are going to be able to watch this and understand like the swedish system and their social your social problems like like that and like i really appreciate like how articulate and and heartfelt you guys are talking about this it's really awesome yeah. you guys are so it's fun to talk to you too. yeah 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 i can it's a funny thing, the thing you said, Alvin, about like the uh, prescribing drugs, because I think in like, as you said, a lot of people's experiences, and in my experience as well, I went to uh, a meeting with a doctor, like a regular uh, specialist doctor, it's like a um, general doctor, they, and within like, I mean, we had, we had a conversation for like, like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and I explained like some general symptoms of depression, uh, and he uh, prescribed me antidepressants after like 30 minutes of talking. And when I later got in contact with like a real psychologist, she was like very surprised that I got prescribed antidepressants after like 30 minutes. And she said that like, oh, usually we recommend like doing them first, like you, you need to have like a regular uh, psychiatrist or right. psychologist that you talk to. And uh, secondly, she, you usually do like evaluations and you, uh, you try to find like a drug that is suitable for you and that uh, you have someone that helps you manage like the side effects if there are any side effects or something like that so um, and i think like you can see it and i think like three out of ten suites are you can't quote me exactly but it's something like this three out of ten suites are on antidepressants and six out of ten suites are on uh, psychopharmaca like uh, benzos and lydica and other, 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 but just uh, ssris and similar antidepressants it's three out of ten swedish people Wow. So it's like a lot of people that have like yeah. mental health problems in Sweden. Have you guys have, have you guys read this book, uh, Brave New World by uh, Huxley? I'll just Huxley. No. I know about it, but I, I haven't read it. Yeah, it sounds like very similar to that. You know, like you walk in, you get your soma, and then it just kind of like numbs you. You know what I mean? No, I think it's like, it's like in, in Brave New World, at least everyone's happy. Here it's like we take drugs and we get to a level where we're like, okay, I can I can handle life now. And then it's like, this is happy. And this is like where we're at. Yeah. So it's still pretty. Yeah. Well, most people can't handle life once they... Just, yeah, it makes it worse. Yeah, it, it makes, makes it worse. I was, I, I took like, uh, I mean, I know people who have been like fucked by it a lot more than me, but I was, uh, I had like a lot of problems. 2016, 2017, and I, the psychologists I met were like pretty bad. They they always said like, oh, I, I don't know what this is. Like always, so I I just got I just got Lyrica from them, and I took uh, 250 milligrams of Lyrica every single day That's for like insane. half a year. That's insane. Yeah. But and then I, I decided myself to cut it down. They were telling me to get more. They were like, oh, it, it's not working. You have to up it even more. Like, take 250 500. milligrams a day? Yeah, for half a year. <laughs> My God. And, uh, they wanted me to take more. So, yeah, I decided myself to cut it down. Now I just take, like, sleeping pills. Well, uh, I, just to sleep. yeah, I, I kind of want to, I mean, this is fascinating. I, I, I uh, want to hear what your perspective is of, like, like looking at the United States and hearing about the U S and stuff like, what are your thoughts of the U S or I guess, what is the public perception of the U S in Sweden? And also, <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> let, let's start with that. So go for it. Like, unfortunately for you guys, you have like Trump as your president and he can like, change the perception of the United States right now. Yeah. So like a lot of focus is just talking about Trump and like, yeah. it's quite like, it's, I mean, like, I wouldn't say that, like, Swedish news is ridicule Trump, but we have, like, a pretty good, like, we have SVT, which is, like, uh, the government, it's like the BBC in, uh, in England, and they're quite openly, not critical, but it's just, like, they're just exposing or explaining what he actually does and what he actually does in an interview, and it just comes up as, like, it's ridiculous. So I think we have, like, a pretty, it, it feels like, yeah, it feels ridiculous. It feels, like, it's bizarre. It doesn't feel real right now. Right. Uh, but there, are, there, there's obviously a lot of like 
a lot of other things going on in the United States. There's right like the, the cultural but influence is like uh, yeah, it's I mean, huge. It's yeah, like it's the huge. Americanization of like not just Sweden but like every country. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like the same here as it is in like. But I, I think it's even more in Sweden. I think yeah. like a lot of other countries still have. Like a lot of their own culture, but we don't especially have a yeah, culture. in our own, in our, in our, in our I, generation, I, I, everything I, is American. <laughs> everything is American. Race, sure. no, uh, we, I feel like Americans usually like <coughs> they need to be right or wrong the whole time. If you get what I mean, I mean you it, you can't be anything in between all the time. Uh, I mean you have like a two party system in uh, American rights. That's right. Yeah, that. I mean, I think there there should be some more debate uh, to open up the. I completely political. agree with you. I I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Uh, like I think that's for me. That's one of the. Oh, go for it. Yeah, when you have a two party system, I mean, you kind of just create. You you kind of just create like opposing sides. If you get what I mean. I mean, there's bound to have there's bound to be disagreements uh, yeah. i can't really no, I, no, I agree i agree with you i think i think that uh in america that's one of the reasons that we have such polar polarization and gridlock in our, yeah, our politics is, is because that two-party system setup doesn't allow for any conversation it doesn't allow for any dissenting opinions you know and and for many european political systems that have coalition building, you know, different political parties that kind of, um, you know, maneuver to to coalesce over one issue here or one issue there. We don't have that at all. And so it generates a, a lesser of two evils kind of a voting system, which is horrible. And you, you have, a, like, uh, uh, most of the political things are bound to, like, uh, some TV channels too. I mean, I see a lot of CNN. It, that's like the democratic news, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind I mean, of. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, I, you have Fox News too. Uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, they're done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the U.S., like I'm, I'm think I just want just want to say this about like the different news sources. I think you know is that at least in the mainstream consciousness, people are saying, oh, like CNN and MSNBC are like the Democrat media sources, and Fox News is the conservative media source. But like when you look at CNN, it's not really Democrat. What what they do on CNN is, and on MSNBC and on Fox News is they all kind of do a similar thing. They just kind of do clickbaity um, yeah. Yeah. news yeah. stories that don't really have any substance whatsoever. And you look at MSNBC and and Fox News, and they all kind of do the same thing. They they have shouting matches. They do sensational media like stories like oh, like a cat is stuck in a tree, you know, for like twenty minutes. But then they fail to talk about the corruption in the politics of Brazil, you know, yeah. with Bolsonaro, or they don't talk about yeah. Sweden at all. They don't talk about, you know, and, and um, so there isn't much substance to the news sources here in America, I, I don't think. You know, you know, corruption, I think that's interesting because my first thought when I think about, like, America, I, I remember I watched some guy on YouTube called Secular Talk for a long time. Uh, he's, an, like, an American news guy. Uh, He's um, yes, exactly, and I, I, I like when he was talking about the U.S. It, it just felt like a lot of the problems we have in, uh, in Sweden are almost well, the problems that we're now getting in Sweden. Like I told you about the, the uh, like the bureaucracy, it feels like not in the same way, but a lot of it is like, and the U.S. is, is a big country, so it's like generalization, but it seems like. It's that, but a lot of the time on steroids, almost like you don't have any, any like at least in Sweden we have almost all parties have some sort of like populist appeal. They're they're all like trying to gather like a lot of votes from everyone, and they're like everyone is pretty 
claiming to be anti-establishment in a way. Like the right parties, the left parties, the mainstream parties, everyone's saying, oh, no, you're the establishment. No, you're the establishment. And like, oh, we're going to fix it in this way. But in the US, it just feels like everyone's like, fuck the people, <laughs> you know, in politics. Yeah. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah, you're absolutely I, right. I really have to like uh, agree with you what you say about like this uh, sensitization or like the people, the media working with uh, clickbaity titles and such because uh, I feel like a lot of people when they make the analysis that like CNN is democratic or Fox News is right wing, they might be right in that. But what I fail to realize is that they are like companies driven by capital and right now left wing is more marketable. You make more money if you're like progressive, if you're like pro LGBTQ uh, and like they fail to see that. So they might be correct in saying that, oh, this organization is acting left wing right now, but they're, they're like one step behind in the an analysis. And it's the same, you can see it in Sweden this year with the pride parade. We usually have like a huge pride parade and like companies are so invested in it. They have yeah. huge marketing campaigns. And because of coronavirus, you couldn't have a pride parade this year. So no company has had like I haven't seen. Well, that's that true. Pride. I haven't that's seen true. anything of that pride this year. Like, I, I haven't been. Yeah, same. So it's that's like, crazy. It's, it's just a big marketing. We have like yeah, it's a marketing. You have yeah. uh, and uh, I, I think it's quite a right. There's one thing yeah. that I think is very like interesting when it comes to like Swedish people's attitude towards like America, because in one hand we're like so influenced, and so like it's almost like when when it's fitting for us to like worship American like culture or whatever, like we we take so much from America and like you know claim it or whatever or like uh, identify with it and like uh, kind of praise that. But on the other hand, we also like. We take so much pride in being anti-American. <laughs> like people really like we always like pat ourselves on the shoulder. Yeah. We're not as bad as America. Yeah. yeah. It's like the we just like have the, the good part. Yeah, it's like a dystopian like society <laughs> uh, in our heads. So whenever people want to talk about like structural uh, structural racism or like institutionalized racism, whatever it's called, or yeah. like inequalities in Sweden, we always talk about like how progressive we are and we're not as bad as America. But uh, like there's a lot of problems here too and people are just like so blind because we're not as bad as like the other guys. And I think we have been very progressive in Sweden for like a while, but it's almost like we've lost momentum and we and politicians still like hold on to this idea that we're so much better than the rest of the world. But like like you said, like we were the most like educated country. I don't think we are uh, anymore. I that was right because it's like yeah, things are not as good as they used to be. Yeah, but there. everyone still thinks that we are, and we, we are that's, really, like, yeah, that's why we're, we're so like proud, pride, like or proud. Yeah, to be like not as bad as other countries, but we really like. Uh, there's, it's not a, the utopian society that like everybody imagines. No. Like people really think that live in this country that it, it really is like. Utopia. I think like an uh, yeah. unfortunate. Uh, so, or, or, were you finished? Yeah, yeah. I think like one like uh, unfortunate uh, like uh, consequence of this like Americanization. You can see quite clearly. So like at least from my perspective, I haven't been involved in politics like for so long. I'm 22 years now, so I could say like four years. I've been like watching the election election cycle closely, and you can like see a um, Americanization of the uh, of the elections. Societal, if you compare to uh, prior years, like uh, I know you have this like um, this style of debate where you have like all the candidates and they have like two minutes and it's like this they pay they say their slogans and you have the make America great again and you have the change or uh, I think like uh, re recently I saw we had like all the politicians in Sweden who were like running for office and they had like yes or no signs so they could. So you've got a broad term and you can say yes or no. And I feel like that is like, I wouldn't say taken, but like at least like indirectly inspired by the American election cycle, this uh, sensitization of the media that you were mentioning before. Uh, and I think that's like an unfortunate consequence. Uh, I think like we've always had, uh, we example, like an, an example is that people usually criticize the media in Sweden of being like left wing. Mm. Uh, or at least like the SVT at the BBC I was talking about. And I think like a consequence, ironically, a consequence that causes that is that they're like 
academic in their nature. And it feels like a lot of academia is pointing not like super left-wing, super socialist, but at least in that direction. The, the academic society is not far right. Um, and I think like uh, that has, we've lost some of that in the, at least from what I've seen in the election cycle, with these more like uh, modernized debate types, like panel show type debates. And I think that's very, yeah, instead of having like these long style debates and uh, longer conversations with the actual uh, to, candidates. To be honest, you, you shouldn't need an audience for a debate on TV or anything like that, because yeah. I think that an audience yeah, kind of, point. an audience kind of like changes the viewpoint of the whole debate. Also, it, it kind of creates like a competition. Yeah, that's so, what, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a, it's what it's like watching reality TV. Yeah. Watching reality. It's the exact same thing, yeah. and it, people are like, uh, we have like because there's like a person. Um, it's like a character in a TV show. Every politician that like uh, is supposed to. Wait, that's it. Also, no man. What is it? Party leader, also the force leader. Ah, precis. The fucking head of the also. Also, we have like, some like, trouble with like, words. Yeah. yeah, I think like instead of like in America, you have like the candidates, you have like the democratic candidate. But in Sweden, we have like the democratic leader. So we have like the social democrats, and they have a leader. And we have like the Sweden Democrats and they are a leader. And he's talking about like the candidates that are like the leaders of the yeah. eight or nine different parties right now. Yeah. And they're like they've all become like characters almost. And they it's such a like it's on such a personal level, like people like hate them and they hate each other and they're like in this room together and it's yeah. like it's like you dissociate almost. It's like it's not you you're not really watching the people that are supposed to like it's not politicians, it's fucking children. Like, yeah. we have more discussions with each other. It's like, we're so much more sophisticated than those, like, At like all those conversations. No, okay, yeah. yeah. No, we're not, obviously not. But like, <laughs> when we have like a serious discussion and yeah. we have to, like, we, we show so much more, and just to strangers too, like, just respect each other. And we're not like, it's always like, oh, you said this thing, and then you try to like, pull out like mistakes that you make. it's a competition yeah. it really isn't like it's not an, like you're going right. into like have an argument as if it's like i'm gonna win or i'm gonna lose and yeah. the best way to win is to like paint the other person as like a monster but yeah. we really like meanwhile as like while they're talking like we're just like bullying each other there's like people you know that are homeless or people that are like dying and we're like and these people are like people that we it's like a cloud yeah, they it's like help. fucking hell. Like we need help. Well, I think I think you know, I completely agree, and I I think that uh, you know I I want to ask you guys next about like how social media you feel has influenced your lives. Um, but but first I, I just want to say like I think that it's something too like social media and politics and um yeah. has really influenced us uh, in a way of like communicating where people are listening to to one up each other to to react yeah. to each other not listening yeah. to understand and to further the conversation and to to almost process you know I, I, those are the most important kind of conversations ones where you just are kind of developing an idea and you're asking questions to try to bring all minds together to try to come yeah. up with a solution not trying to one up and dick measure basically yeah, so you, when, you, when you're arguing with a person and you're viewing it as if like you're going to win or you're right. going to lose, you can only win, really, if you're truly having like a good, like you're not arguing, you're just like having a discussion or whatever, or like when you're discussing a certain topic, it can only be like a win because you could like get better at understanding what other other people mean or what they're, where they're coming from, or you can like teach someone something or you can learn something so it's like really a win-win and sometimes you're just not going to agree at all and that's like that's completely fine really but you're not supposed to like it's it's so childish it's like really uh, and that's like i think a lot of people get really angry at politicians because it's like they really do behave like children and it's like uh, it's yeah it's like for their cloud chasing almost. yeah it's like well we have an actual we have actual problems that People are gonna suffer, but not these people. 
because they're just like they're too busy like chasing clout and trying to like sweep each other like they like, just fuck yeah. each other over because like you know it's really like um it's they're not really taking it seriously it feels like they're so like um i don't know i think it's like uh, it, it really interesting that you mentioned social media because i think that social media is like I think you've always seen like person cults in, pers in uh, politics, but I think like uh, social media has in some way like ignited the person cults behind the politics. Or uh, yeah, in, in, in politics, you, you've always seen person cults in politics. And I think like if you look back, you have like, I think you could quite clearly say like you had a person cult surrounding Podmap, or at least in, in, uh, from my, my perspective, uh, I was born after, this is an old politician in Sweden. And I think that's just one example of people like talking about the person instead of always like, of course, but in that like situation before social media, it, it, it was kind of like locked behind. You had to have like this basic understanding. You had to at least understand what he was saying. But social media in some ways, like um, in the way you were talking about it, it allows this like free form conversation without any like uh, gateway <laughs> before it. I, I don't want to say you have to gateway politics, but at least you have to like understand the basic concepts. And now you have these like person cults developing around like, uh, especially like in York Sun Sweden, you could you you could really see like a person cult around him, and he's the leader of the uh, Sweden yeah, Democrats. the Sweden Democrats, which are like a far right uh, in Sweden at least a far right uh, party. And I think you could like clearly see like, especially on social media, if you if you go on TikTok, you could usually see like. Uh, we call them SDR. It's like people who vote for the Sweden Democrats. It's SDR, so they're like SDRs, and um, they're very focused on like their leader and like Yimmi, and he's like very good at arguing and he has facts and logic. Sure, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, and, like, yeah. and I really think that like um, social media in some ways have like ignited that perspective. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, I think that's like the biggest thing that uh, you have. Uh, like in this kind of like Ben Shapiro politics, yeah. like get wrecked compilation <laughs> feminist. <laughs> yeah. okay. We have it's like a meme. Yeah. It's not even serious. Yeah, that's like the point of it all. Like after every debate, it's like someone has uploaded Jimmy Walk is on Rick's feminist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's mm. ridiculous. Mm. Well, it's kind of like the level of the conversation that is available to happen. Like it kind of yeah, it puts like a, it. It, it opens the entry level, so there's absolutely no entry level, so anyone can talk about it, and it like puts a limit on the conversation that is able to happen because you're limited by the social media. You're limited to comments on a video that has already shaped your perception of the subject, and then you're like trying to respond to that subject in like the comments, and you get like this uh, like piled on by like hundreds of his followers, and they it's just like um, I guess it's echo chamber that people are talking about, and you're like. Yeah. yeah, I think you can. I, I mean, fix it's it. the thing, um, and is I talked about uh, yesterday. That's like kind of a result of it. I think uh, a lot of people who uh, get into politics today and might be like an effect of social media. I think so because I, I'm not sure it really existed before. Like people get really bitter about it. People get really like they think that oh, the world's gonna end. Like whether it's. Uh, like you know, far right or far left, or whether it's center or whatever it is, everyone's like talking about that the world's gonna end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's. I mean, there are big problems, but when when you have this like weird thing where everyone's like, um, where it's like the end of the world, everything's yeah. the end of the world. Then even even if it's if it's true, it turns you into like a goddamn uh, miserable person and. Uh, if we're, if we're miserable, then like everyone's going to suffer around you, you too. I, mean, I remember when I first got into politics, I think it was like just because of the US election. And uh, I, I thought uh, like the whole Trump and Bernie Sanders thing was very interesting. That got me into politics. But very, very shortly afterwards, probably because of social media, I got uh, really, really bitter. And I remember being on, on the... Uh, on the, you know, we have, in Gothenburg, we have, like, electric uh, sport, like, what do you say in English? Uh, tram. tram yeah. yeah, like, electric trams. And I remember, like, going from school and sitting on the tram, and I was like, I hated everyone there. <laughs> for, like, no <laughs> from nowhere. And, and that's, like, that's what it turns you into, I think. A lot of people get, wow. like, 
suffer from it. Yeah, dude, I appreciate that the candor of that. Yeah, just like yeah, like going onto a bus and be, just being like, I don't want to be around any fucking of these people right now. Like, I'm just, I'm it's done. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's really it's sad. Up. It's sad that that's becoming the norm. Um, yeah, well, definitely. I, yeah, so be, before before we before we go. <laughs> Before we go, because like I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, this has just been such a such a surprise uh, to like sit down and talk to you guys. Like this is amazing. Um, yeah. Same. Um, what? Um. So the last question, I guess, I'll, I'll ask you guys before we get going is, um, is moving forward, how do you guys from? I'm interested in hearing from each of you. Like, how do you think moving forward we can create a world that's that's better and and. Uh, yeah, how do we make the world a better place? I guess, um, and I would love to hear kind of each of your each of your thoughts. You know, uh, <laughs> I I don't speak like broadly about it because I think it's like such a broad question and such a broad subject. So I'd like to focus on like one thing. But I feel like uh, when I went to uh, uh, we have a gymnasium. It's called or like gymnasia. I guess you could translate it to the like, it's high school basically. Yeah, high school. So you go. You ended when you're 18 or 19, and you started when you're 15 or 16, right? Yeah, it's three years. So uh, during that time, I went to uh, what's called like the nature uh, linear line, like the program, and it's like uh, focused on the uh, the sciences. So you do like math and chemistry, and um, and before that, I went to like the general school that everyone goes to, and I think uh, one thing that has like allowed me to, as you say, like speak about this and explain like, the situation is that I've, uh, during my time in university, I've encountered some like philosophical courses, I've read some like older works, I've read some political theory, I've read some ethics, and I really think that if you include those in like the mandatory uh, curriculum, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, curriculum for, for everyone, I think that could have like really positive effects. Because not only does it help to like understand what, uh, what like the political, the politicians are talking about or what other people are talking about, it allows you to form your own opinion and it, it allows you to uh, express this opinion and express if, if you have a critique about something, it allows you or at least like expands your ability to critique it or to explain what it is you're critiquing. It gives you some form of like nuance and I think it would be great to have that in like the basic curriculum. Even if you're, you're doing like the, the sciences and you're reading math and chemistry, I think like reading some like uh, Plato and reading uh, uh, The Republic or something similar, or at least something in that vein, and reading some form of ethics or something similar. Like, so I would like to make like a uh, toast for the humanities, like bring, bring in the humanities. <laughs> like, uh, I think there, there, there's a book called, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, but it's by Martha Nussbaum. And it's about, uh, it's like a defense of the humanities. Mm -hmm. And it's like, um, it, 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 it's an attack of like this profit driven ed education that like produces engineers who are great at building computers and able to like solve solutions. Martha Nussbaum, she's a philosopher. I, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, I think, isn't she married to like Amartya Sen or something like that? Like the. I only read that one book. So maybe like the know. politics of freedom or something like that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I love, I love philosophy too, but I, 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 don't remember the name of the book. Yeah. So that I would like. Uh, also, the school system is work. like, and not just uh, yeah, the school system is so broken. But I think that's like uh, it goes for like most countries, I think, because like because uh, it's based on like a certain type of person is gonna like you know be able to be in school and like function. Yeah. yeah. So like, cause. Um, yeah, because I have, I have like ADHD, and I didn't know that until I was already done with school. So, uh, like, school kind of like uh, just like broke me completely, like ruined my self esteem. By the time I got to high school, I was already like, I didn't even know like what the fuck was going on. Like, <laughs> I just felt completely uh, hopeless, and I think uh, that's probably the case for most people, even people that can like past with like good grades and stuff, I still feel like the whole environment, so uh, it really creates this uh, whole, like we were talking about, uh, feeling very like alienated from, like just, yeah, school in general is just not, it doesn't work, we need like a reform, I guess? Yeah. 
change. I, I think I'm a lot more pessimistic than everyone here, but I'm like pessimistic in an optimistic way. I think like history kind of shows that uh, things get better, but history also shows that things have to get pretty bad before they get better. And I think like the whole the whole system around like the world and politics and like how how like profiteering in wars and how how like it's it's a whole cycle just going around like profiteering in wars which leads to other things which leads to other things and everything like this uh it's like the whole system is kind of rotten from from its foundations and i think that in the like in our lifetime things are going to get a lot worse i think so and i think that's in a way a good thing because people won't give a fuck until they're like they realize oh i can't pay my bills and when normal people realize that then something will happen wow thank you yeah and how about you in the back <laughs> me or him you yeah. uh, i don't know <laughs> what, what was the question again <laughs> how do you want to save the world <laughs> yeah how do you want to save the world exactly uh damn. I don't know actually. I think the wine is talking right now, so I can't really <laughs> answer that. Question, but yeah, I don't know. Well, don't how about know. How, well? How about this? How about like? How about in your normal day to day? What is something that can make the world a better place? You think? What is something that that you would like to do from this day on that you could do to make the world a better place? Like, I think I, I agree a lot of like what uh, uh, Noah is talking about. Like, you need to have some sort of ethics. Uh, how do you say it? You need to have some sort of ethics. Like, I can't. Say you just want to use can be check out which one. Also, what say the man also? No, thank you. <laughs> that's okay man that's good no i i i, I appreciate uh <laughs> it's a big question and these are like really like deep and epic things we're talking about and uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I feel like everyone here has already said everything that i'm thinking about so I don't have anything to. Also, uh, on that. I need to add like we're not speaking on behalf of like the Swedish. Uh, no, of course. no. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, 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 most people wouldn't agree. Yeah, I, I think that the thing that's really interesting about this is that like we're getting into with this channel, we're getting into pockets, very small pockets of each place, you know, and, yeah. and that every single person, you know, every person on this earth. The eight billion people all have different perspectives and different experiences and a different story to offer, you know. And and it's important to it's important to listen to each person because it gives a snapshot of each kind of culture. But then also, you see that everyone is still human, you know, and every place is still imperfect, you know. And the things that the things that we share are more plentiful than the things than the things that divide us, you know. And and um, for me, that that's something that I really want to show here, um, and I also want to want to say too that, you know, you guys are really smart, intelligent guys, and um, and it it's very obvious that you care about this stuff, and um, and to not forget just how important your voices are, because um, you know even though there are eight billion people, like one person can create massive change. And, um, and, you know, your life, your destiny may be to change a lot, you know, and um, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys ended up being major leaders in different organizations, you know, when you get, get older. So I just, um, yeah, yeah, just want to wish you all luck. You know, I want to wish you all luck. And, uh, well, who's, your, uh, who's your favorite rapper? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we end. Uh, That's how we end? Oh God, dude! You know what? I, I oh, yeah, you both rap. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I do not know how to rap. Uh, 
I don't, you know, I don't actually know any rappers. I just put rap because I was like, I want to talk to people who are interested in about interested in rap. I like, um, you know, Eminem is very I mean, obvious, but like, he he's really the only rapper that I knew growing up, and um, just a major influence. You know, is um, how old are you? I'm 29. 29. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, actually, my 30th birthday is going to be like in a month, so it's crazy. Oh, happy birthday, man! Uh, yeah, happy birthday, bro. Yeah, man, thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Um, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna upload this conversation onto my YouTube um, like right now. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, make, we're all going. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. So yeah. make sure, yeah. So uh, subscribe, subscribe, and you you guys will see the video pop up and. Uh, yeah, if you guys ever want to talk again, I got my email here. I got it on the on the channel. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are um, pretty pretty cool, pretty cool dudes. Yeah, it was yeah, a really great conversation. Good. Yeah, really, it was a really good conversation. Yeah, I yeah, did not expect fun. this from going on a meeting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we just don't like, fuck with people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'll I'll see y'all later. Okay, take care. Yeah. 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 Wow, those guys are going to be leaders of Sweden.